and welcome back. So we're gonna be creating a very own color palette for our client, Habitual. As you can see here, we have only one color to work with. They have no color palette whatsoever. And we're gonna have some fun coming up with some concepts. Now, sometimes if you're working with a brand new product, you may need to understand the reasoning and the personality of that brand. Kind of like what we did with like typography and other things like that. Working with a fresh brand will give you a lot of freedom to choose and play with colors, which isn't necessarily the case with products that have defined color systems. Step one, let's take a look at what we have over here with this brand. This brand seems very friendly and approachable. We have to also think about the use case too. We have a lot of products on this mobile app and the colors shouldn't necessarily detract from all of that. So we need to kind of be a little subtle with our color palette choice. We may stick to only using several colors throughout the app and, you know, having a couple of accents. So I'm always thinking about that kind of stuff before I even start choosing colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a frame. I'm just going to name it colors. I'm going to have a circle over here. And it seems like we have a yellow. We have like a very dark, dark gray. And we'll have a white for sure. So this is what our color palette currently looks like. It's okay. It's definitely fine. But we run into the same problem that we had before. We don't have enough variety here, especially to actually start creating UI in terms of visual design. So what I like to do is I'm going to start thinking about how we can expand this in terms of color schemes. You know, let's start exploring a bit in terms of colors or color choices. So I know that I'm, I'm eventually going to create variations of this yellow. So we have that for our UI but I'm trying to think of maybe different colors that we may use. And I know one color that really goes well with yellow. So like green, uh, it's okay. I mean, that's a very vibrant green. I'm not a big fan of green and yellow palettes, but I mean, if we just slide this over just a touch, then we start saying more harmony. Let's think about adding maybe like a teal. Hmm. Teal's a hard color to kind of get right, I find. I think that's actually really nice. And if we think about maybe like a split complementary palette, red would uh, definitely work. So if red was the main color, let's just pick a red first and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Maybe that looks pretty good. So this is a split complementary palette. And essentially that means that red would be the, I mean, it could be a primary color. It could be the accent, but the complementary of red is green because it's on the opposite side of the color wheel. On both sides of green though are blue and then yellow. So it is a split complementary palette. Now I think these colors are pretty cool. Like I don't mind them. I think primarily what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this yellow as my main color. I think we can kind of get this a little, a little bit. See, teal is tough. It's tough because it's not really accessible ever unless you go really dark. Red, reds could be harsh, but I think they just really look nice together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to start thinking about some options for each of these colors. But what I typically do is I like to just use maybe one or two colors throughout like a mobile or even a website. I mean, it really depends on the use case, but I like to keep things really simple just because if you start having too many colors, then you run into a lot of issues in terms of it being really messy and cluttered. So you want to avoid that at all costs. What I plan to do here is I plan to make these my primary colors and whatever variations come from these. And this would be a palette that I could use as an accent palette. 
So I'll show you how I'm going to break this up. So what I like to do is, if I'm thinking about creating something that is really, really scalable, Okay, so I'm gonna create like a 75% version of this. Then I'll create 50% version of this, and then like a 25% version of this. So I have enough options if I really do need that. I don't think I will, but it's good to kind of, especially in the beginning stages, start thinking about how you are going to use that palette. So what size are these? These are 38 by 38. Let's just do that. So yeah, I'm going to just do this for all my accent colors. So this one's gonna be 75. This one's gonna be 50. And this one's going to be 25. And we can start seeing that, hey, like, okay, you know, I may be able to use this on a background, possibly. That really is nice. You know, I may be able to use this red for like error states. So keep your mind open. Don't necessarily limit yourself to like one color choice or like one palette choice. Start thinking about all the different variations, maybe accents that you can use. We can even do this for our grays. Okay, what do we have here? We can do 75. We can do 50. We can even do 25. So it's starting to build up. I think these grays may be a little too cool. So what I will do is, so let's move this white. I'll probably copy these. And this will be the original. We'll just keep this over here. I like to kind of keep with this palette. I mean, this is really cold in terms of the grayscale. And I think I'm going to just, you know, tint the gray with a little bit. As you can tell, it's, it's part of the blue. So I'm going to tint it with my yellow. Kind of like what we did when we were expanding a color palette. So I'm going to tint that with yellow. I'm going to expand on this just a bit. So I may not actually go down like by removing like 75%, 50%. Maybe we can do that. Let's see what that looks like. 75, so it is much warmer. 50, 25, but I'm not sure if I'm totally happy with that just yet. You should really think about the amount of grays you have just because you don't want to get stuck with a bunch of different grays because they'll be tough to work with and it could really like muddy your experience. So as you can tell, these are much more warmer. It's kind of bordering on that brown a little bit, but not too much. I actually like this a lot better than this because I think it suits this whole palette a little bit more, but we can keep this to the side for now. Okay, perfect. So this is going to be our grays. What I also like to think about is I like to think about like UI elements as well. So if I'm thinking about like reds, so this could be like kind of like an air, I think this may be a little too light for like a success state if we need one. So we can actually pick a green and this can definitely deviate from your original palette because we are building an interface. And if you're using like yellow for success, I mean, that's kind of confusing. We should really stick to the colors that we know. So here we go, we have a green. I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect. So this can be like our success color, then our error colors. These could be used as our uh, accents. And another thing I like to do is I like to kind of experiment with some gradients. So like if I choose like a yellow and a white, let's just bump up that opacity. Like, you know, using gradients as a background could really be nice. Same with if we change that yellow 
over here with like a blue. That's really nice. And I think like we could probably use that as a background for something. I'm not sure what just yet, but it definitely can be used for something. Try your best to kind of expand on this and you know, have fun with it. I mean, you don't need to use the colors that I'm using. I may not even use all these colors to be honest. I, I just explore it. I may actually cut this color from it and just kind of stick with these grays and these yellows, maybe some blues as well. I'm obviously going to keep a, like a red and a green for like a success in aerostate. I may actually incorporate some gradients if I need them as well. So I'm going to continue working on this gray portion and trying to nail the color palette here. But go in, take a look at the logo, pull the colors from the logo and start building off of it. There's so many ways you can go with this. Like you can go the monochromatic scheme if you want, if you feel like that's enough. It probably could be enough. Depends how you lay out your designs. You can even actually go the route that I went like and try to create like a split complementary palette. That's also pretty fun as well. Take a look at the color schemes that we went over originally. See what you think suits the brand and start choosing colors based off of that scheme and you know experiment. You can even just try all of them and see if you have some luck there and see what you like. So that's how you start creating a color palette just based off of brand colors.